Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Committee on Public Services. Madam Clerk, if you could call the roll. Each member is acknowledging that they are attending the meeting via Zoom and that they are located in Wayne County, Michigan, unless otherwise stated, when I call your name. Commissioner Varga. Present, I'm in Gladwin, Michigan. Commissioner Palomero. Here. Commissioner Hattis. Present. Commissioner Dobb. Present, but I am in Andover, Minnesota. Commissioner Baydoon. Here. Commissioner Ware. Present. Camarecki. Here, but I am in Naples, Florida. Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice here. <laughs> I heard you guys got snow the other day. <laughs> um, okay, Madam Clerk, next item. B, approval of the November 10th, 2020 meeting minutes. Move approval. Support. Move approval. <laughs> okay, we have an approval by Commissioner Ware, supported by Commissioner Dobb. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Next item. CEO business, there is none. Okay, next one. Item D1, and a new business. Communication from the Department of Public Services forwarding the October 2020 report of all complaint calls made to 1888 Road Crew. Okay, I just wanna remind everybody to mute themselves. If you're not speaking, I can hear a lot Would of Would you like background. me to um, mute everyone and then yeah. those? Yes, people. that'd be great, except for the commissioners. Thank you. Okay, back to number. I'll move to, is this a receive and file? Yes. Yes. I'll move to receive Support. and file. Support. Okay. Uh, Moved to receive and file by Commissioner Dobbs, supported by Commissioner Ware. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Next item. Item two, requesting commission approval of a cooperative agreement with Deere and Company. Okay, this is for, for John Deere Tractors. So move. Support. All right. We have an approval by Commissioner Haddis, supported by uh, <coughs> Commissioner Baydoon. Any questions or comments on this item? Um, Madam Chair, I have yes. a question. Okay. Thank you. Um, so this, uh, these tractors are supposed to, um, they're assigned to frag mighty eradication and trimming of young trees along the roadside. So I'm wondering, um, I have two, two, kind of, two questions. Um, will this help the the forestry department with the backlog of tree trimming and tree removal requests? And then also, um, I know Fragmite removal and er eradication is pretty complex. And I, I know that just cutting them down doesn't remove them. Um, they just grow back. But does um, the department have any plans on anything more than cutting down the Phragmites to, you know, permanently get rid of them in the county? So, someone from the administration? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Derek. Good morning. This is Derek Coley, Equipment Division. Um, I can answer uh, part of that, and it's just related to the equipment that uh, uh, the Rose Division Forestry Unit um, asked, uh, asked us to order. Um, as far as the equipment goes, yes, it is, it is a temporary thing. It is um, to help them uh, uh, have effective equipment, reliable equipment, so that they can stay on schedule for their um, fragmite reduction, as well as, uh, you know, lower brush um, and culverts and um, along the roadside that, you know, not only cause problems with drainage, but also with uh, visibility as motorists are approaching intersections. Um, as far as the Phragmites go, um, uh, forestry may have a, a plan. I know I was in a meeting over a year ago and they had talked about uh, some efforts to, 
to try to limit the Phragmites. But as we know, and as uh, Commissioner Colleen educated us so well two years ago, it is a huge problem and it causes massive problems with drainage. And, um, uh, you know, there's there. I think the county already spends um, uh, money to try to limit it, but I don't know exactly what forestry's um, plan is um, or if they have any technology related to that. Okay, thank you. Do you think um, these tractors will help the, with the forestry backlog? Yes, that is exactly what they are, 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 are you know, their goal is. Um, <clears throat> number one, they're new. And number two, they're far more flexible. And um, I guess you could say they, the, the angles that they can cut on, they will make the cuts far more effective so that uh, when they, when they, if they were to get behind on their schedules, at least the growth would not have, um, um, you know, gotten beyond what it what it could with the old equipment or what it would with the old equipment. And if I may add to that, uh, Commission, this is Steve from Road County, Wayne County Road, uh, Road Division. Um, yes, it's 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 actually a great tool to have to trim trees right from the roadway. It's not only faster. Uh, we're able to get a good angles on them and, and it's just, it does a hell of a job for us, uh, especially in forestry division. And yes, it does help out with our SR uh, complaints. All right, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure, great news for that. Anybody else? I got a question, girl. I was signed into this. I saw the display and everything and I clicked something and I can't get back into the, I'm on the Zoom meeting, but mm -hmm. um, I was on it. I think I maybe just cut myself. No, I'm still uh, on. Okay. Any commissioners? <laughs> any more questions? <laughs> okay. Maybe. I had I had a um, approval by Commissioner Haddis, and who supported that? I will. Okay. Actually, you got Commissioner Bay doing supported. Oh, he did. Okay. Okay. Huh? Sorry, Commissioner Ware. No problem. Okay. Any questions? Any more questions? Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, can you take a roll call on this, please? Commissioner Varga. It is Commissioner Varga. Yes. Commissioner Palomero. Yes. Commissioner Haddis. Yes. Commissioner Dobb. Yes. Commissioner Baydoon. Yes. Commissioner Ware? Yes. Chair Marecki? Yes. Motion passes. Next item, please. Item three, requesting commission approval of amendment one to a agreement with the Alliance of Rouge Communities. Okay. This is a, um, a time only extension, nothing in the change of the dollars. Any questions on this? Move we'll approval. Okay, who, who was that? Bay doing? Get move oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm still hearing so much background noise. Maybe it's just me. Okay, uh, moved by Commissioner Varga, supported by Commissioner Bay Doom. Questions, comments? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll on this, please? Commissioner Varga? Yes. Commissioner Palomero? Yes. Commissioner Haddis? Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Commissioner Baydoon? Yes. Commissioner Weir? Yes. Chair Marecki? Yes. Motion passes. Next item. Item four, requesting commission approval of a cooperative purchase agreement with Orchard Hills and Equipment Inc. GBA Advisors. Okay. This is for the uh, Rouge Valley Sewage Disposal System. So move for approval. Okay. Support. Okay. All right. We have an approval by Commissioner Haddis, supported by Commissioner Ware. Questions, comments? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Okay, I'm going to mute everyone again. I'm <laughs> okay, that'd be great. And then commissioners can unmute themselves. 
Commissioner Varga? Yes. Commissioner Palomero? Yes. Commissioner Hattis? Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Commissioner Beydoun? Yes. Commissioner Weir? Yes. Chairman Recchi? Yes. Motion passes. Next item. Item five, requesting commission approval of modification three to a grant agreement with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Okay, this is a not a dollar change as well um, for the completion of the Nankin Lake Reservation Protection. Okay, Varga? Support, Bay doing? Okay, supported by Bay Questions on this? Comments? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Commissioner Varga? Yes. Commissioner Palomero? Yes. Commissioner Hattis? Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Commissioner Baydoun? Yes. Commissioner Weir? Yes. Chairman Recchi? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, we could go on to the agenda. Um, the first three items could be taken together if that's the desire of the uh, committee. These are for receive and file. Madam Clerk? Item so six. Move, so move the three items for receive and file. Six, okay. seven, Four. eight. Okay, we have an approval from Hannah, supported by where for six, seven, and eight. Um, any questions, commissioners? Okay, since this is a receive and file, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, item six, seven, and eight pass. Next item, Madam Clerk. Item nine. Requesting commission approval of a resolution for the obsolete abandonment and discontinuance of an easement for a former public alley in Romulus. Uh, I like to be the motion maker for that in Romulus. Uh, Harris. Okay. All right. They do in support. Okay. We have an approval by Harris, supported by Baydoon. Any questions on this one? Seems pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Commissioner Varga? Yes. Commissioner Palomero? Yes. Commissioner Hattis? Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Commissioner Baydoun? Yes. Commissioner Ware? Yes. Chair Marecki? Yes. Motion passes. Next item. Item 10. Requesting commission approval of Amendment 1 to a contract with the Michigan Department of Transportation. Move okay, approval. This, okay. Support, Hadis. All right. All right, we have an approval by Commissioner Palomera, supported by Commissioner Hadis. This is just an exhibit, exhibit A update. We actually passed this back in February. Um, any questions on this? Okay. Um, actually, oh, Madam Chair, oh, sure. I'm sorry. Can I no. ask a quick question? Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I wanted to ask um, if this was the grade separation that State Rep. Um, Darren Camilleri had been working on um, that's also going to get federal funding? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll on this, please? I think Basham too, Commissioner. I'm sorry. What? What, Alona? I. I think Commissioner Basham has been working on this much longer too. Okay. Okay, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Commissioner Varga. Yes. Commissioner Palomero. Yes. Commissioner Hattis. Yes. Commissioner Dobb? Yes. Commissioner Baydoun? Yes. Commissioner Weir? Yes. Chairman Recchi? Yes. Motion passes. Next item. E, such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. Okay, I haven't heard of anything coming forward. Next item. Public comments. 
Okay, before we start public comments, I would like to turn um, turn the meeting over to uh, Commissioner Palomera. Thank you, Madam Chair. For, for those uh, that are zoomed in, uh, intent on an update on the Grosdale Parkway bridge matter. Uh, there is going to be an update that comes out tomorrow morning. It will be issued by Grosdale Township officials in conjunction with our Department of Public Services. Uh, MDOT, the county, has, has been working on identifying a pre-qualified a uh, contractor to do the work as soon as possible. And there should be more news on that in the morning. Uh, if someone from DPS would like to uh, intone as to any other updates on this matter. And uh, Derek Field from Grosiel Township is the contact person that will uh, most likely be releasing sometime tomorrow morning, it's expected. And also uh, how, how the chain of communication is gonna work. Uh, Department of Public Services in the future is gonna contact Grosiel Township officials immediately with information. They'll coordinate releasing it, that information to the public through the township, I believe. And as soon as possible, it will also be posted to the Wayne County DPS webpage, there's a link for Grozeal Parkway Bridge. So uh, that is the update. And uh, for those that uh, are, are, as I said, zooming in and, and uh, wanting more information on, on the status of the bridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that update for all of us as well. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, have we gotten any emails or anything? Um, no emails. No emails, okay. Okay, um, can you unmute everyone? And we'll start the public comments if there's anybody that would like to uh, address the Committee on Public Services. Madam Chair, may I speak? Sure. Hi, Madam Chair, my name's Kyle DeBose. I was present at the full commission meeting last week. Um, thank you, Commissioner Palomar, for that update. I, I look forward to seeing uh, that public communication tomorrow morning. Um, just an update on my end, just from the last commission meeting, I think we had over 800 uh, folks that have signed the petition when I last spoke with you, and now we're at over 1,050 people that have signed that petition just asking for a plan from you all. Um, and, and over 100 people, I think, have RSVP'd from, from the area to this meeting, so you all can understand the, the interest in this. As I communicated at the full commission meeting, the hardest part, I think, for a lot of us was just the... Uh, the, the sudden nature of the change in the plan. I think a lot of us had budgeted for the bridge to be closed through December and then hearing uh, a little week, over a week and a half ago now that the, the bridge would be closed for a year um, at least, possibly more. It just, just hurts us a lot. So the thing that we're all, a lot of us are requesting is, is just a plan from you all um, so that we can plan for ourselves and also know what, what to advocate for. It sounds like you've all been working hard to get that. And I, again, look forward to that update tomorrow. Um, but, but again, just, just thankful for the work everyone's doing and, and for everyone here that's participating and, and, um, and, 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 and becoming a part of the process with you all. I know this is my first public services com uh, committee meeting, so I'm excited to be a part of it and see how you all work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Madam Chair. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And you know what? I forgot to mention that there's a two minute uh, limit, just so you know. Okay, um, go ahead and identify yourself. Uh, Jameson Yeager, I'm from Gross Eel. I'm one of the recently elected trustees. I just wanted to uh, thank the board for the attention in the Gross Eel Parkway Bridge matter. Um, I know it's a good project and a lot of stuff has changed. So uh, I just want to introduce myself um, and make myself available to the board. And, and Kyle's right. Uh, the rapid change with the bridge project has obviously hit a lot of residents. Uh, he mentioned budgeting, and that's, a, of course, a concern for the people of Gross Hill as well. Um, but I'm here, and I'm available, and uh, I thank the board for its attention. So thank you. Thank you. I would like to speak also. Okay. Please introduce yourself. Yes, I'm Julianne Cohn. I'm a long, long, long time resident of Gross Hill, like 70 years. Anyway, I wanted to ask 
why is it that the commission just found out that the peer issue existed when I knew about it about a year and a half ago? You know, um, um, Ms. Khan, we do not exchange back and forth. We just listen to comments. So, um, well, I think maybe, that would be a good question for you to ask to whomever you need to ask it to. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Hello, hey. can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? This is Victor Brown, longtime okay. resident, long resident of Gross Hill, about 40 years, and uh, very, of course, interested in the uh, bridge uh, situation. It seems like there are two separate questions. One is the more immediate repairs of the bridge, which I should imagine would involve, of course, the county, the county commission and the state, and the long-term possibility of a replacement bridge, depending on the extent of need, the extent of deterioration of the piers and other aspects of the bridge. For that, it would seem uh, prudent to look into federal help as well, perhaps Army Corps of Engineers, you know, to look at all possibilities, all resources uh, for the island and for the region. So I would hope that someone is appointed to do the necessary research into that, the long-term needs, as well as the shorter-term needs of, of repairing the bridge as it is. Does that make sense to you? Well, thank you for your comments, Mr. Brown. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you for listening. Um, anybody else? Yes, I'd like to speak. Okay, go ahead. We can hear you. My name is Tony Missouri. I'm a Grow Zeal resident. Uh, and I just like to comment on the fact that this meeting that was scheduled for today has been scheduled for some time. A lot of people have known about it, but yet some type of big announcement is going to be made tomorrow. I like the timing. All the people that are here today waiting to hear something have to wait until tomorrow and figure out how we're going to hear that. Uh, I'm telling you, when, when the Grosse when the Township makes announcements, most people find out about them through the local newspaper. Uh, there's no avenue for anyone to get that information rapidly. Uh, and one other comment, and I know you're not in a position to make any answer to this, but I certainly hope that whoever's doing the thinking is thinking about the terms of closing that bridge for another year after the time it's been closed. Uh, that's a tremendous hardship on people. Perhaps the consideration could be given to opening the bridge for four-wheel traffic only, cars, SUVs, four-wheel, four-wheel only pickup trucks and making all the trucks go to the toll bridge and let them deal with it and give people the opportunity to get back and forth to work, go to the doctor and do the everyday mundane, mundane things that we have to do without putting up with the aggravation of waiting in line to go across the toll bridge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mazurik. Anyone else? Uh, uh, yes, my name I'm sorry, could you repeat your name? Birchfield from Grozio. Um, I agree with Linnea Birchfield from Grozio. Okay. Concern, um, of course, is the safety. If, you know, we, we've been very lucky so far that we have not had an emergency that's required immediate attention that resulted in someone's death or the loss of a home or anything. And that's why it's critical to have both bridges up. And that's my big concern. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and Ms. Birchfield, can you please uh, spell your last name for the record? Sorry, that, sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, sorry. It's B-U-R-C-H-F-I-E-L-D. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Hello, this is, this is Victor Brown again. May I say one more thing, which I should have said before? Sure. What was this said prompted it in me. Uh, we're down to one bridge right now. And uh, it strikes me 
for safety and other many other reasons. So if something happens to the one bridge that we have, we're in a terrible situation. Is there any contingency plan? Should something happen to the toll bridge, which we are totally dependent upon right now? What would happen? What what would take place to help and assist in an essential fashion uh, the people of Grosseal if something happens to the toll bridge in the meantime? Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, uh, yes, this is Renee Herman, a Grosseal resident. Okay, go ahead. Yes, um, a couple people have mentioned um, the budgeting issue for residents and the hardship that many of us are experiencing with having to pay the toll every day to go back and forth to work or shopping, whatever we need to do. Um, I'd like to put on record that uh, or request that Wayne County look into um, some kind of tax reimbursement to the residents or um, providing payment to the toll bridge for the residents to go back and forth across for the next year while the bridge is closed. Um, that would certainly help um, our budgeting purposes. And, uh, you know, because for some people, on the island, there are, um, you know, four, four people going back and forth in their families, which costs hundreds of dollars a month to do. So again, if we could have Wayne County look into that as well. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Herman, can you please uh, spell your last name? Thank you. Yes, H-E-R-M-A-N-N. -N. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, yes, this is uh, yes. oh, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. You're you're breaking up, but go ahead. Are you? Do you yep, want to make some cuts? Yep, I was um, stopping for a moment because I thought somebody else was speaking. This is Kim Mobley. So I have a question for the commission. It'd be great if everybody could answer this. So, okay, Kim, um, Miss uh, Miss Ball, I, I didn't get your last name, but we don't answer questions here. We just hear comments from from the uh, citizens. So you can um, ask the question, um, but we, we are just listening to your comments. Okay, great, thank you. So I do think a big question out there from my perspective. So I have, I'm not a long-term resident of Groziel. Moved here a few years ago from Riverview. I've lived in the Down River area. No answers. And the question and the issue that I'm, that I'm struggling with is as a taxpayer, to the county, to the state, to the federal government, upon purchasing a property here, assuming that there's public access, which is both, you know, an issue of safety and finance. I'm struggling to understand legally how you can not provide the residents with a with a safe crossing and how this has been ignored for so long. Um, it's, it's an issue that I think we're all wrestling with. I mean, obviously we have the tolls, which are not anticipated whatsoever. Um, but the other issue is really just having public access to, uh, your property. I don't know how you really get around that. And I'm struggling to understand how this was ignored. Thank you. And, and I, I would just like to note something. These are things that have been going on for years and years, way before this administration came in um, about five years ago. So I just want to make that comment. These, these issues with bridges and everything going on 20 years. Anyone else? Also, can the last lady, can she speak, uh, can she, uh, who spoke, can she please uh, spell her last name for the record, please? Thank you. Sure. M-O-B-L-E-Y. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Oh, also, Hi. Hi. My name's Dennis O'Brien. I live on Hickory Island, uh, which is one of the southern small islands in Gross Eel Gross Township. Uh, I feel extremely vulnerable with the bridge situation since I have a private bridge I have to cross to get to Meso Island. I have a Meso Island bridge and then the, either the free bridge or the, uh, 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 the, the pay bridge uh, for uh, access to the mainland. But my main purpose in speaking here is actually to thank the county for the fine work they're doing on the Meso Island Bridge. And I hope and pray that the the bridge that, uh, the you know, the, the Grosse Hill Parkway Bridge could be handled in 
the same expeditious way and competent way that the contractor is performing That's on the Mesa rich. Island Bridge repair. Because all the rich people live down there. Oh, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. What, what, what lead Bast, a grocery resident, I'd like to speak, please. Yes, sure, I'm a grocery resident of 20 oh. years. Okay, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Are you through, Mr. O'Brien? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I'd like to speak. Yes, go ahead. My name is Bill Heil. That's spelled H-E-I-L, so that you have it for the record. Thank I you. happen to live on Miso Island, so I can <laughs> add my thank you for the, the wonderful job that has been arranged for that Miso Island bridge. At the same time, I can commiserate with the people who have spoken, uh, Mr. Brown and Ms. Mobley. There's a lot of concern here about the fact that the town, uh, the county, and then some of the administration was before you, but there's a, a long history of knowing that this bridge was in serious condition and performance to maintain it, to provide for what would be our welfare in case of emergencies or, or just plain inconvenience like this with these tolls has gone on for decades. It's a serious concern. Well, I know you have something that you're going to bring up tomorrow that will help us, and I'm grateful that you have arranged that. This whole, this whole state has difficulty with sufficient funding for infrastructure. And any type of effort to replace this bridge with something better that would give us a secure future, not a patch quilt of, of immediate or emergency repairs, is going to compete for funding with a lot of other communities all over the state. I think that I'd like to hear you people someday address the fact that we need a better way of raising enough money to repair the infrastructure. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I'd like to speak, please. Go ahead. Walid Bast, a grocery resident. Okay. And, uh, you know, during the last long term closure, we were told that uh, the repairs that the county did uh, were supposed to last us 30 years. Uh, it's barely been 10 years, but neither here nor there. And while we're all garbling with this horrendous situation that we have to deal with as residents and uh, that, uh, that, that expenditure that we have to come up with with every single month. Uh, can we at least have that bridge open for uh, uh, passenger traffic, a single lane traffic, just anything, uh, uh, just to help these residents out. There are people out here that cannot afford to get on and off that bridge and pay $4, $5, and $7 every single time. We need immediate relief. While you, are, while you guys are all discussing all this and whose fault that is, we really don't care at this point. We want something done. We need something done. We pay our taxes and we, we demand that you guys do something about this, this, this awful situation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, this is Renee Herman again, um, if, I, if I may make one more comment. Go ahead. Um, I heard someone's on microphone that was not muted say that all the rich people live on Grozeal. I would like to, I, I don't know if that was a commission member or a person in the audience, but I would like to say that I am not rich. I am a working class person, my husband and I, and it is a genuine hardship for us to pay this toll every day to go back and forth to work. There are some affluent people on the island, but the majority of the residents are not rich, so to speak, people. So it is, you know, a hardship to our budget to pay hundreds of dollars a month for this bridge toll. We're not all rich, we are all hardworking citizens. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I um, would like to speak again. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am One. Julie Ann Cohn. Okay. And I, and I would like to second what Renee Herman just said. I have lived here a very long time but I do not consider myself rich. And um, some of the people who live over here are not rich. In fact, most are not rich. Okay, thank you, Ms. Khan. Anyone else that has not addressed the um, commission yet that would like to address uh, this committee? Yeah, yes, it's Chris Matthews. I live, okay. uh, I live in Hawthorne, I've been here 22 years. Go ahead. And I want to make a statement about the fact that the peers 
were not inspected until October or November when the bridge has been closed since May. Now I know the township was doing the approach and they've done a great job. None of us knew that it was going to take seven months for them to even look at the piers. And we need to think back to even the, the county commissioners now may not have been on this commission before, but they need to ask some questions. For example, why weren't those inspections by somebody competent? And so maybe picking the person who charges the least amount of money to do a job is not what we should be doing. We should be looking for quality inspectors. And when they do the walking thing, they should have then done the inspection on these piers. I uh, think that's what has people the most upset. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Matthews. Anyone else that has not yes. addressed us at this point? Yes. Uh, Hi, this is. Go, go ahead. ahead. <clears throat> you go ahead. Ma'am, you can go ahead. Okay, this is Roberta Brown, um, Grossville resident for over 40 years. I'm going to segue into what the previous participant said. I don't understand if there's checks and balances at all in the bridge situation. I'm extremely concerned that we were told it was a year, just like the previous person said, and now it's going to be another year. I think there needs to be oversight of, of an extremely competent agency, possibly Army Corps of Engineer. Again, this is a township of around 10,000 people. We are at extreme risk if the bridge goes down. If someone has a heart attack on Hickory Island, it slows their ability to get to a, a hospital. Again, Hickory Island is at the very south end of the island. To get to a hospital for help, in, in terms of confidence going forward, I think we need incredible transparency and oversight and who is evaluating it. I even wonder if there's something monetarily going on. I mean, I, I think people sometimes, I hate to say this, I, I really, I won't go there, okay? But um, we need to know that this is being reviewed by highly competent organizations, not just the person doing the bid that all of a sudden says, oh, it's another year, the peers are terrible. And by the way, this is just a temporary measure. You're gonna need a whole new bridge. Thank you so much um, for Thank your work you. and please advocate oh. for us. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone uh, else that yes, has not uh, addressed? This is, yes, this oh. is uh, Greg Parmesan from the uh, Greenfield Civic Association. Okay, go ahead. Our organization has been doing some research in the Wayne uh, County Bridge for the several years. We've been following this issue very closely. Uh, and as some of you may have uh, read, we've uh, obtained a number of documents through the Freedom of Information Act that uh, we've uh, made available <laughs> to the public. One issue that I, I think the uh, commission, uh, mm -hmm. I think would be very helpful if you could explain to the public at an appropriate time. We'd like to know what happened to the 4.4 million that Congressman John Conyers uh, earmarked for the study of the replacement of the Wayne County Bridge uh, as far back as 2005 in both the uh, Transportation Appropriations uh, Act of 2005, there was 1.2 million in there for the study and there was 3.2 million in the uh, highway bill of 2005. And uh, through our research, we've been unable to determine what actually happened to that money, why it was uh, held for apparently uh, over 15 years before it was actually re reprogrammed for maintenance. But we'd like to know why the, uh, the study was never done when uh, apparently uh, the county had reached the determination that a study was necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to address the Committee on Public Services? I would like to suggest, my name is Gene Swift. I live on the South End. And okay. if we have a medical emergency, um, the ambulance has to go 12 miles out of the way to get to South Shore. And I wonder if anybody has considered uh, the possibility mm -hmm. of helicopter cases. 
Thank you. Anyone else from the public that would like to address this committee? This is Kim Mobley. I just have one more question. Since somebody mentioned that the Zoom meeting live from on the Roseville, Wayne County, is that no about the bridge? Okay, there's just a whole bunch of people complaining about the. If you're the toll if you're not addressing Wayne County, not paying for the tolls. Miss Quinlan, could you put yourself on mute, please? Is okay. Um, Okay, because I think everybody's having a hard time hearing. Okay, anybody else from the public that would like to, that has not addressed the commission? Or could you, um, you're more than welcome. Anybody else left that yeah, would like to say I'd like to comment, please. Okay, go ahead. I'd like to remind the, uh, the commission that- um, Please introduce this, yourself. Please introduce yourself. My name is David Leslie, and okay. I'm a resident of Grozeal. I would like to remind everybody on the commission that uh, our, our only alternative right now is a bridge that was built in 1911. And they have a lot of commercial traffic going over that bridge every single day, every single minute really. And it's only a matter of time before we have issues with that bridge failing. And I know private bridge and it's not your problem, but uh, at some point, it's only a matter of time over the next year, at some point, 10,000 plus Grozeal residents are going to be stranded on that island. And I really feel like this is more of an emergency situation than I'm getting the feeling that uh, anyone at Wayne County is considering at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leslie. Anyone else from the public that yeah. hasn't addressed us at this point? Yeah, yeah this is Michael Briscoe, a uh, okay, short time Grozio resident. I feel like I'm hearing very well. Um, it sounded like I'm a person complaining along with the rest about having to pay toll. Uh, a little disappointed to hear that comment, of course. And, um, you know, certainly there's a lot of passion from this group. We're faced with a pandemic right now that's hurting our finances. And, um, you know, certainly we all, we all want, to, want to feel safe and we're trying to protect the budget. Um, as I look at the agenda, which was interesting, seems like there's a lot of funds at the hands of the commission to get a hold of grants um, and whatnot. So I, I believe you all are very competent people that would be able to propose some uh, support for the residents, not only in safety, but monetarily. And then lastly, um, we, we sure would like to be over communicated to because it sounds like there's a lot of questions, a lot of people uh, with a lot of ideas. If there's a way to over communicate to us, it, it may help in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Briscoe. Anyone else? This is Kim Mobley. I, I, I believe that there were some negative comments made about Grozeal residents. Will that be on the record? You know what? I, I don't know. I think that there's people that are not on mute, so different conversations are coming in from the public. So I no, that would not that would not be on the record because we don't even know who said that. And there's a lot of people that are not muted right now. And that's why the commissioners are having a hard time hearing who's talking to them because people are having their own conversations without talking to the commissioners. Is there anyone else that would like to address the Public Services Commission or committee? I'd, I'd like to say something. It. Yep, go ahead if you haven't, if you haven't addressed. Okay. Oh. okay, my name is Rebecca Sapula. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? Oh. So, um, we're told, I don't know who's talking. <laughs> I know, I know. This is the, we have to put everybody off. Yeah, is there a way you can mute everyone except us talking? Madam Clerk. Is that what you want me to do? Mute everyone or? Yes, mute everyone and then we'll try this again. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. My name is Rebecca Sapula. I live at the south end of Grosio. Um, 
cost aside, tolls aside, I'm, I'm not rich. I have to go to work every day. I actually work in the city of Monroe. And when I chose to live over here, we chose, you know, my commute was reasonable. With the Wayne County Bridge being closed, I have to travel all the way to the north end and cycle back around. It adds 30 minutes either way. So that's one hour out of every day of my life just to get back and forth to work. And I simply wanted to state that as a perspective that maybe no one had thought of. Um, I'm not complaining about the cost. I'm not complaining about the tolls. While it is taking a financial toll, it's more of a time and I I, you know, like a time function. And I didn't know if anyone had ever looked at it from that perspective. That's all. Thank you. I have a question. Carrie okay. Deal, longtime grocery deal resident. Okay. And again, um, sir, we will not answer questions. We're just well, okay. To uh, comments. Uh, well, just, okay. A consideration for you. Let me restate that. That'd yeah, be great. Uh, yeah. Given, given we only have, we only the, one have the one bridge, bridge. And it backs up terribly. Is there any consideration that can be given to actually closing it to marine traffic? Because when that happens, it really backs up. So it's just some food for thought. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public that would like to address this committee? Could I speak any? again on that issue? No, 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 ma'am. No, we're, we're going for people that have not addressed addressed us yet? Well, I have seen a, I have seen an ambulance sitting there waiting for marine traffic to pass. Thank you. Anyone else from the commission that would like to, uh, anyone from the public that would like to address the commission? One more time, anyone from the public um, to address the Committee on Public Services? Okay. Perry? Yes. This is Joe Palomera. Go ahead, uh, Joey. Thank you. In summary, and I, and I know we, you know, our rules don't allow for back and forth during public comment, but I would like to summarize uh, and address just a few of the key topics if you'd be willing to uh, waive the rules temporarily so I may do so. Yes, go ahead. Thank sure. you, Madam Chair. What you heard today is a small sliver of the disappointment and frustration that Grozio residents, of which I am one of them for over 21 years, are feeling right now. I have inquired and I've even requested that a portion of our tolls be reimbursed somehow, some way. Unfortunately, Public Act 51, which is the state road tax dollars that funds road repairs, are limited for usage for road repair and maintenance. It cannot be used to pay tolls over a private bridge. Secondly, uh, MDOT initially said that yes, we do need a, a new bridge. That is the long-term solution. But they have also recognized that Grozio residents cannot wait for the funding to be accumulated, which is 80 to $100 million, and four or five years before fixing the Grozio Parkway Bridge. That is why uh, MDOT has agreed to cut significant red tape with the county and uh, I believe, and hopefully it'll be announced soon, to approve a pre-qualified vendor to begin work on the bridge as soon as possible. There's also been some comment about when the last inspection was on the piers. There was one done in the spring, in May, I believe. And that was consistent with the one six months ago on steady okay. deterioration. Then in the most recent inspection in November, it showed significant deterioration of those piers. And that's why in the name of safety, the decision was made because it was supposed to reopen in December and those repairs were gonna be made while the bridge was being used next year. Well, according to the experts, it's not safe to do that. And safety first, I think is something that we can all agree upon. Lastly, uh, Wayne County is utilizing, we're not waiting for federal dollars, we're not waiting for state dollars. Wayne County is utilizing from its Act 51 funds that it gets from the state and, and determining that this is such an emergent nature that all Wayne County funds, Act 51 funds will be used to expedite this repair. 
Uh, thank you again. I'm, I'm sure now my colleagues have a flavor for uh, what's going on downriver in Ingrosil. And uh, I hope you will join me in supporting when those measures come before this co committee and the full commission to approve the funds to begin this process and, and project as soon as possible. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, thank you, uh, Commissioner. And thank you to everyone that came out today. I'm sure it's a very frustrating time for all of you. Um, okay, um, with that, um, Madam Clerk, next item. Adjournment. Okay. Um, before we adjourn, I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and um, wish you a, a nice time with your families and your friends who was ever getting together with their families and friends. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Okay. Support. I'll support. support. Okay. All right. We are now um, adjourned. Thank you, everyone. And I think everyone. Bye bye. Yeah.